Are you looking for an air purifier for your home? First, I'll let you into a secret. Most of the air purifiers on the market, underpowered and overpriced. I wanna help you to avoid the thousands of duds on Amazon to find a device that works. Since 2020, I've tested over 70 different air purifiers and performed in-house experiments looking at air cleaning performance, sound level generation, and energy usage. And this is how I've uncovered 10 tips to help you choose the right air purifier for your home. Number one, KDAR, KDAR, KDAR. Now, unlike most home appliances, the work of an air purifier is hidden to the naked eye which means that manufacturers can say all sorts of rubbish to get you to choose their product over a competitor. The good news is that the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers have a KDAR test, short for Clean Air Delivery Rate. And this evaluates air purifiers at removing dust, pollen and smoke. And the score ranges from zero to 400 CFM. Now, as a very rough approximation, for small spaces up to a maximum of 200 square feet, you'll need at least 150 CFM. For medium-sized spaces, you're looking at 260 CFM. And for very large spaces, you're looking for 300 CFM and over. Very large spaces will need very large KDAR. For example, you might look at the Smart Blast, which has a massive KDAR of 559 CFM. Alternatively, you could use multiple devices together, just add their KDAR scores together. The Energy Star website has a great directory where you can search and see the KDAR scores for most air purifiers. Two, bigger is generally better. While it's a good rule of thumb to match the KDAR to your room size, in most cases you want to get the biggest device you can live with. The reason is that KDAR scores are made at the highest fan speed. And for many devices that's just too loud for most people to deal with. They can be upwards of 65 decibels. With larger devices you can run them at the lower fan speeds and they can still clean a lot of air without generating too much noise. Another benefit of a bigger device is they often have similar, only very little extra running costs as the filters don't need to be changed so often. Three, don't trust room size recommendations. If you go on Amazon today, you'll see many air purifiers giving specifications for room size of 1,000, 1,200, 1,300 square feet for small little cheap air purifiers. And you might think that you should get one of these small devices and it'll be fine for your large space. But in reality, they're using a marketing trick because they're giving the room size for just one air change per hour. And they're not breaking any rules and there's no rules against doing that. But in reality, you need much more than that. The EPA recommends you get at least 4.8 air changes. And this really reduces the room size recommendations that you'll see. So as a good rule is use the Energy Star directory to look at the room sizes there, as well as our site at House Fresh, because we always give the room sizes for 4.8 air changes. Four, look for models that have a removable pre-filter. All types of air purifiers will use a pre-filter, which protects the main filters from being used up and also means that larger particles are stopped before going into the device. But you need to keep on top of keeping it clean. Now, some devices have pre-filters that are attached to the filter and it's just tricky to keep on top of it. It's much better to choose a device that has a removable pre-filter that you can take out of the device without removing the main filter and you can keep it clean regularly. In test, we saw that a dirty pre-filter can reduce effectiveness by 40%. Now, if you can't remember the last time you cleaned your pre-filter, give it a clean now. Your lungs will thank you. Five, don't worry too much about activated carbon. The particle filter, often HEPA in many cases, do the bulk of the work for most people. So unless you have a serious issue with gases, VOCs and odors, then you don't need to worry too much about getting a large activated carbon filter. Now, you will notice that many air purifiers do have a carbon filter but many just have such small amounts of carbon that it just won't be useful in cases where you have serious issues. Now, if you do have serious issues with VOCs and odors, such as smoking from neighbors next door, you'll likely wanna look at specialist devices like the Austin Air Healthmate that has 15 pounds of carbon or the IQ Air Health Pro Plus that has five pounds of carbon. But be aware, these devices cost a lot to buy, to run, and the filters cost a ton. So if you don't need it, don't worry too much about the carbon. The cheapest air purifier that has a good amount of carbon would be the Winx 5502. It has a separate washable carbon filter that you can wash and get more life out of it. And it's good considering the price, but it still won't be enough to deal with very serious issues with odors and gases. Carbon filters will reduce the particle efficiency of your device. So if you don't need the carbon filter, try running it without. Smart Hair does this really well where all their units will only come with particle filters as standard and you choose to get the carbon filter. Whereas devices like Lavoie, where they bond the carbon filter with the particle filter means you have no choice. You have to run 
the, the filter with both the particle and the carbon. Six, HEPA is not a requirement for a good air purifier. HEPA is just a grade of filter that measures how much small particles are blocked in first pass filtration. But air purifiers will have multiple passes of air, so it's not such a good thing to look at. Now we've seen this for ourselves with Lavoie, where we've now found out that they don't use HEPA grade filters, yet they perform very well at removing tiny particles from the air. The same is true with the Corsi Rosenhol box or the Nukit Tempest, DIY devices that use MERV 13, non HEPA grade, yet they perform as well or even more effectively than many devices that use HEPA grade. Don't get caught up with the HEPA grade use, look for KDAR. Seven, don't forget about noise levels. There's no point an air purifier being great at cleaning the air if it sounds like a turbine. A device like an air purifier is gonna be needed to run continuously, so you wanna make sure that it's not so loud that it's gonna put you off doing it. Many devices that are too loud are just gonna be switched off and never used. Now be wary of manufacturers because they will often state the lowest fan speed sound level instead of the highest fan speed. Now some of the quietest air purifiers we've come across are from brands like Allen, Smartair, and we've also been super impressed by this new PC fan DIY kits like the new kit Tempest where they use PC fans to push air through a device and clean the air but without generating massive amounts of noise. So before you decide on a device, make sure you know exactly how much sound it's going to generate at the fan speed you want to run it at. 8. Decide if you want an ionizer. Ionizers have a bad reputation after companies in the early 2000s pushed these devices on consumers like the Sharper Image Ionic Breeze, which then we found out that caused high levels of ozone and VOCs. Now there was a change in the law in 2010 and carb certification came in place, so modern ionizers don't lead to these buildups. However, they can lead to dust buildup around the device and some house fresh readers have let me know that it can irritate their respiratory issues. Now, if you do want to go down the path of getting an ionizer, stick to brands that have it as a button that you can press on and off. Allen, Winex, Coway all have this. And avoid brands like Blueware where the ionizer is integrated as part of the process so you can't disable it. Nine, you might not need those smart features. Now, modern air purifiers come with a ton of bells and whistles with onboard sensors, app support, scheduling, you name it. But for many situations, you might not need it. For example, dealing with wildfire smoke, allergies, or outdoor pollution, you're gonna to wanna to just use your air purifier at the highest level that you can deal with from a sound point of view and just let it run. So only these extras are not required. And you can often find devices that don't have these smart features for less money and are less likely to have issues in the future. 10, stick to brands that have been around a while. If you don't wanna go down the DIY route, a good rule of thumb is to stick to brands that are well known. Many brands like IQWear, SmartAir, Lavoy, Coway, Winex, they've been around for many, many years, and you can be sure that they have a lot to lose if their products don't live up to the hype. In 2020, loads of new companies entered the air purifier market, and in our testing, they mainly had underpowered and overpriced devices. And the real bad side of these new brands is that if they go bust and they go out of business, you won't be able to find filters or even access warranties for devices that break. So it's much less risky to go for brands that are well known. I hope these tips have helped you to find the right air purifier for your home. If you wanna know which specific models we really like, then check out our best air purifier for 2024. I'll make sure to link it at the top. As always, if you have any questions about the tips I've shared or even have any tips to share yourself, let me know in the comments.